Now suppose that we have a system of n linear equations and n unknowns, that is a system of the following form, where my a's and b's are known and I'm solving for x. In previous lectures we talked about the augmented matrix, that is a matrix associated to the linear system. We stack the coefficients of a on the left hand side and we augment the a matrix with the column vector b in its last column. In the previous lecture, we discussed the procedure to solve the linear system, the so-called Gaussian procedure. We said that we're allowed to do some elementary row operations. That is, we're allowed to interchange two rows, multiply a row by a non-zero scalar, and scale two rows, add them up, put the result in one of the two rows. Why do we do this? This is because I want to transform my A matrix, the original augmented matrix, so a matrix in upper triangular form in order to solve using back substitution. We gave a simple example where it happens that through row operations, I perfectly obtain the upper triangular form. That is, I have no problem in solving using backward substitution. However, this is only one case that occurs. And in this case, you get a unique solution. There is other cases which we'll be discussing in this lecture. Now, while going from here to here, from A to B, there's some things to keep in mind. You get two main cases. Case one, you get a consistent system. That means you have only one unique solution. The other case, you get an inconsistent system. That happens when, when you're doing row operations, you get that one of the rows contains all zeros on this side. If that's the case, then you have an inconsistent system. It doesn't mean yet that there is no solution. We'll argue that just now. So if I pick one row and I get 0, 0, all zeros except what comes in the last entry, B, which we'll be talking about just now. If I get this, then it's an inconsistent system. It means I have two further cases, case A and case B. Now, if B is non-zero, it means we have no solution. Otherwise, if B is zero, it means we've got infinitely many solutions. Simple as that. Now, the way to explain this is going to do so graphically. I'm not going to show you a proof or anything, even though the proof is really simple. I just want you to keep in mind, every time you solve a linear system, just keep this example in mind. Now imagine I'm in a 2D system. This is my x-axis and this is my y-axis. And one of my equations is minus x plus y is equal to 3, right? How does this look like? Well, it has to pass through minus 3, 0. will look something like this, right? The other equation is minus x plus y equal to minus 7. This guy should pass by 7, 0, and it is parallel to this first line, so something like this. As you can see, both lines do not intersect, and hence we don't get a solution. Well, it's worthy looking at the augmented matrix. So it's minus 1, 1, 3, and minus 1, 1, minus 7, right? Well, all I have to do is instead of R2, plug in R2 minus R1, right? So that this guy minus this guy is zero. Well, what do we get? The first row is the same, whereas the second row becomes, we start minus one minus minus one is zero. One minus one is zero. Minus seven minus three is minus 10. Well, in that case, we can see that the last row except for b, which is this guy, is not is 0. So this guy is not 0, whereas all this row is equal to 0, right? In that case, we say that we have no solution. Now, graphically, you can understand this, that the two lines do not intersect. This is it for case A, when b is not 0. Now, what happens when b is 0? Well, let's take the first line that we have here, that is minus x plus y is 3 that passes through minus 3, 0 as such, and another line that is minus 2x plus 2y is 6. 
it's just two times the first line, a scalar multiple of the first line. This means that the line we have here could represent both equations, minus x plus y is 3, and minus 2x plus 2y is 6. Let's write down the augmented matrix. So minus 1, 1, 3, and minus 2, 2, and 6, right? So let's perform a row operation over here. Since this guy is not a zero, so we can proceed by nulling this guy out. How do we do that? So instead of R2, you can plug in R2 minus 2R1. That said, the first row remains unchanged, whereas the second row becomes, we start minus 2 minus, 2 times minus 1, that's a zero. 2 minus 2 times 1, that's also a zero. And 6 times minus 2 times 3, which is also a zero. So what happened here? All this row, including the B coefficient, is zero. What does that mean? It means that we have infinitely many solutions. Okay, if someone came and asked you, well, what are they? How can you characterize them? Well, the row that led to this zero, namely the second row, you grab it, say minus 2x plus 2y equal to 6. You try to express one variable in terms of the other. Let's say y in terms of x, right? You get a 2y is equal to 6 plus 2x, divide everything by 2. You get y is 3 plus x. So any couple that satisfies this equation is a solution, namely everything on this line, right? Any point on this line it is a solution, and hence you get infinitely many solutions, okay? This, of course, could extend to 3x3 three three systems or n by n systems, and hence we have the same cases. Let me show you an example. So let's say I've got the following system. Let's write down the augmented matrix. And let's start by reaching an augmented, an upper triangular form. That is, we start here. 1 is not 0. So let's start by nulling the second, the first element of the second row. That is, instead of R2, I'm going to plug in R2 minus 2R1. To get the first and third rows are the same. So 2 minus 2 times 1 is 0. 1 minus 2 times 2 is minus 3. 1 minus 2 times 0 is 1 and 0 times 1 and 0 minus 2 times 1 is minus 2, right? Let's do the same thing to try to null out this guy. Instead of R3, I'm going to put in R3 plus R1. So the, the first and second rows are the same. So minus 1 plus 1 is 0, 6 plus 2 is 8, 3 plus 0 is 3, and 1 plus 1 is 2. Okay, all is good right now. Now let's try to null out this guy by repeating the process over here. So instead of R3, I'm going to plug in R3 plus 8 over 3, R2. Okay, that said, the first and second rows remain the same. Whereas the last row becomes, so we start 0 plus 8 over 3 times 0 is 0. 8 plus 8 over 3 times minus 3 is 0. 3 plus 8 over 3 times 1 is 17 over 3. And 2 plus 8 over 3 times minus 2 is minus 10 over 3. As you can see, there is no problem. There is no row that is all zeros. And hence we can solve by back substitution. So we can get x3 from here. That gives us minus 10 over 3 divided by 17 over 3. That is minus 10 over 17. We can get x2 from here. That is minus 2 minus x3. That is 8 over 17. And x1, that is 1 minus 2x2, which is 1 over 17. So this is my solution. So here, we say that the system is consistent. Okay, this is one example. Let's see another example. 2x1 plus 2x2 minus 2x3 is 5. 7x1 plus 7x2 plus x3 is 10. And 5x1 plus 5x2 minus x3 is 5, right? So let's see what happens. Let's write down the augmented matrix. A is 2, 2, minus 2, 5, 7, 7, 1, 10. 
n5, 5, 5 minus 1, and 5, right? Now let's proceed by nulling this guy and this guy out. Let's start with the 7. Since 2 is not 0, we can proceed. So instead of r2, I can plug in r2 minus 7 over 2 r1 to get the first and third rows remain the same. Now the second row becomes, we start 7 minus 7 over 2 times 2 is 0. 7 also minus 7 over 2 times 2 is also 0. And 1 minus 7 over 2 times minus 2 is, and 10 minus 7 over 2 times 5 is minus 15 over 2. Now let's proceed by nulling this guy out. Well, how do we do that? So instead of r3, we can plug in r3 minus 5 over 2 r1. That said, the first and second rows remain unchanged. And over here we get 5 minus 5 over 2 times 2 is 0. Again, 5 minus 5 over 2 times 2 is also 0. And minus 1 minus 5 over 2 times minus 2 is 4. Also, 5 minus 5 over 2 times 5 is minus 15 over 2. Now, let's try to null this. This is 0. So we're done, right? The upper triangular form is there, since this guy and this guy and this guy are all zeros. However, you have to pay attention to one thing. That is, we can further null this guy out. How? Instead of r3, I'm going to put in r3 minus half r2. Well, what do we get? Well, the first two rows are the same. That is 2, 2, minus 2, and 5. 0, 0, 8, and minus 15 over 2. Now we start. 0 minus half 0 is 0. Again, 0 minus half 0 is 0. 4 minus half 8 is 0. And minus 15 over 2, minus half 15 over 2, is minus 15 over 4, right? Well, all this row is zeros except for the b. That means we have no solution and the system is said to be inconsistent, okay? Let's give one more example. So x1 plus 2x2 plus x3 is minus 1. 7x1 plus 4x2 plus 4x3 is 5. And 6x1 plus 2x2 plus 2x3 is 6. Augmented matrix is 1, 2, 1 with a minus 1. 7, 4, 4 with a 5. And a 6, 2, 2 with a 6, right? Let's proceed by nulling this guy out. So you can first start by saying R2 is R2 minus 7R1. That said, the first and third rows are unchanged. Now the second row we start, 7 minus 7 times 1 is 0, 4 minus 7 times 2 is minus 10, and 4 minus 7 times 1 is minus 3, 5 minus 7 times minus 1 is 12, right? Now we try to null this guy by replacing R3 with R3 minus 6R1. What do we get? The first two rows are the same, whereas the last row becomes 6 minus 6 times 1 is 0, 2 minus 6 times 2 is minus 10, 2 minus 6 times 1, I'm sorry this guy should be 3 <laughs> over here, same as here, right here. So again, 2 minus 6 times 2 is minus 10, 3 minus 6 times 1 is minus 3 and 6 minus 6 times minus 1 is 12 right now that's why i changed the 2 to a 3 so that the second and third rows are the same why because now when i go ahead and null this guy look what happens so the way i can do that is instead of r3 i just plug in r3 minus r2 right that said the first and second rows are the same, whereas the third row, 0 minus 0 is 0, minus 10 minus minus 10 is 0, minus 3 minus minus 3 is 0, 
and 12 minus 12 is 0. What did we get? We got an all zero row including the B. What does that mean? It means that the system is inconsistent and we get infinitely many solutions. So what have we learned from this lecture? So one, we've seen that through the Gaussian process or the Gaussian elimination process, we stumble upon two main cases. Case one is when the system is consistent and hence we get a unique solution. And case two is when the system is inconsistent, which means two things. If the last element is non-zero, the B coefficient is non-zero, then we have no solution. And when B is zero, we get infinitely many solutions. This is best visualized through a two by two system when the lines are either parallel or they contribute to the same line. They coincide on top of each other, right? So in the former, they don't intersect and hence we get no solution. Whereas in the latter, we get infinitely many solutions that are characterized by this line. First, we give an example where we have a consistent system and hence a unique solution. In the second example, we get an inconsistent system with no solution because the last element is non-zero, whereas everything preceding it is zero. And in the last example, we also get an inconsistent system, however, with infinitely many solutions because all the row, including the B coefficient, is zero. Okay? So that's about it. If you found this lecture beneficial, please leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, just leave a comment down in the comment section below and I'll make sure I'll get to it as soon as possible.